But we'll be right back. This is Pops Coliseum in Hamilton, Ontario, where Team Canada defeated the Soviet Union for the Canada Cup. The series featured one overtime game and one double overtime game in the most exciting hockey tournament since the 1980 Olympics. But unless you subscribe to cable TV, this was the only place you could have seen it. With guitar, Schmitz goes to extremes. Martin, since 1833, builds the world's finest acoustics, handmade of the best solid hardwoods with lifetime warranties. Now the Stinger Electric in hot body shapes and colors is backed by the Martin name at just 179. For the power and dependability the pros count on, it's America's own Crate Amps. With 60 watts, 12-inch Celestian speaker, and the best warranty in the industry, Crate's G60 GT whales at just 299. Here and try the extremes at Schmitz. Well, you know the bad news. Charlie Carlson is in the meeting of his life, and his shirt is perfectly dry. But that doesn't mean he smells good. Because Under Armour motor is invisible, he needs total protection. Sure, solid. If everyone would take a look Sure not only helps protect against wetness, it actually kills bacteria that cause odor. So, Charlie, why go to work with a dry shirt and a false sense of security? Use Sure Solid and be just as sure about odor as you are about wetness. Touchstone Pictures presents Tom Selleck, Steve Gutenberg, Ted Danson. Angela, oh, you look different. What happened? I'm dry. When it comes to women, they're all American. When it comes to babies, they're all wet. I don't know anything about taking care of babies. You do realize she did a doodle. Oh! Dude, this is a girl. Should we be doing this? Are they always this strange? Yes. Since they got involved with another woman. Three men and a baby. I'll give you ten bucks if you stop crying. Rated PG. Now playing at theaters everywhere, check newspapers. All right, the final in the Class A championship game. Cambridge undefeated, 14-0 with a 28-14 victory over Lakeville, and Lakeville finishes the season at 12-2. Proctor and Gamble sure congratulates the offensive and defensive players of the game. First of all, on offense, John Nystrom of Cambridge. He had a big kickoff return to help set up a score in the first quarter, and he caught a touchdown pass of 24 yards from Labatt in the ball game. And he's our offensive player of the game. The defensive player of the game is Scott Johnson. And Proctor and Gamble will donate $100 per player to the Minnesota State High School League in the player's name to aid the chemical dependency program in our state's high schools. So again, congratulations to our offensive and defensive players of the game. Down on the field now to Gilly. We're here with Jeremy Wick and John Nystro, the Class A state champs from Cambridge, and they're just talking among themselves, uh, between themselves, the old buddies here from Oxlip, and saying that uh, Lakeville was the toughest team you've played so far, Jeremy. Did you feel that way at halftime, or did they really put it on you just in the second half? Yeah, well, they're, they came out tough. I could notice, because there's a, there's a sure difference from the last game. The holes are a lot tougher to open, and the first drive when they, I ran three times in a row, and they shut me off pretty much all three times. I knew we'd have to really work hard and get it all together to really be, to beat them, you know, and be successful. He hung on and did that, and that's the mark of a champion. John, uh, last year you won the state championship. Nothing less was acceptable with all the players you had coming back, the whole backfield. A lot of pressure. How did you guys deal with that this year? Uh, we just worked real hard on the offseason and just really went to football camps and lifted weights, and like, I guess it's paid off. You guys uh, grew up together. How much of that has uh, helped? when it gets into a team atmosphere and you you two and Casey uh, all playing together. It helps a great deal. I mean, we all we all know each other. I mean, we played since seventh grade and we each know how, you know how each other is in the backfield and, and what kind of moves he has, how, how quick he is getting off the ball or going to the hole or exactly you know what we, each other can do. And it helps a great deal. John, you done now or you got winter other sports that came? Yeah, we got other sports, basketball, baseball, hockey track. Whatever. That's the typical of the great high school athlete. They go on to the next season, but right now they're going to celebrate their state championship. Jeremy Wick and John Nystrom from the Cambridge Blue Jackets back upstairs. Back with more of Prep Bowl 6 from the Metrodome right after this.
you're thinking of smoking cigarettes, there's something you might want to know. The smell gets in your clothes. No little cinnamon gum freshens breath longer than Big Red. So kiss a little longer, hold tight a little longer, be close a little longer. and John Rooney and Jim Jolins, Dick Kramer, all here at the Metrodome at the site of Prep Bowl 6. We have four games now in the book, and we're getting ready for our finale of the morning, afternoon, and evening. The Class AA game will feature Winona against Moorhead. Let's go back downstairs to Jim Jolin with a special guest. Dave Jeff joins us now prior to the championship game, and Cripple 87 is uh, as successful as its predecessors, I think, Dave. Oh, it's been excellent. The crowds have been super. The enthusiasm, as you can hear, has just been tremendous. You know, Dave, I think we'd be a little remiss if we didn't mention uh, Ward Fees is not with us. He's uh, undergoing some physical problems. He's been such an integral part of the high school league and, uh, and the tournaments and uh, the prep bowl that we put on that uh, we want to wish uh, Orb well. And, and his uh, illness that he's going through right now, and we hope to have him back with us at, uh, at the basketball tournament time, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. And I know that you must miss him terribly. Well, Orb has been the foundation of the league for a number of years, and the ball and the basketball tournaments and just the enthusiasm that's been generated by all the tournaments are credit to Orb and the contributions he's made to the league. We know a lot of his friends up in Hibbing are uh, joining us and wishing him well and uh, a speedy recovery. Now then, uh, looking ahead to this championship game, uh, they, they've got a tough act to follow. That was a pretty good ball game. Well, the, uh, the ball game that you just saw was probably one of the better ball games that we've seen in the prep bowl for a long, long time. And we have two teams, obviously, undefeated coming in, shooting for that double-A championship. And I think the fact that they're both from opposite ends of the state is just going to kind of bring things together and make for a nice climax. Okay, Dave, we'll look forward to it. We'll go back upstairs to John and Perry. All right, thank you very much, Gilly. All right, we're getting ready for the 2A championship game, Moorhead and Winona. What do we look for in this one other than two teams that do a pretty good job of running the football? They certainly do, particularly Winona. They go to the left side. They have three all-conference linemen on that side, so we'd expect them to see to see them go to that part of the offense and perhaps uh, Moorhead a little better balance. They got Rick Eiden as a quarterback. He can throw the ball well. And two teams, John, I think a lot of people did not expect to be here. Moorhead uh, ranked two in the state. That is not a big surprise, but the way they shut down top-ranked Richfield in the semifinals, 28 to nothing, most impressive. Winona, on the other hand, they beat a traditional power, Stillwater, in their semifinal march to the Metrodome for the AA championship game. And they came from behind. Stillwater took a 20-14 uh, to 14 lead. They missed the extra point, but after that, all Winona to the Windhawks here as well. And an interesting matchup, out of state matchup, and uh, looking forward to it. Two 13 and no clubs. Both teams running well, and uh, if need be, they can put in the air as well. Well, some of the Winona fans have told me they're still riding the high of the Twins' victory in the World Series because some of this was unexpected. Uh, the great play of the Winona club to get this far. All of their fans are just taking it in. I'm sure the Moorhead fans are doing the very same thing. We're going to take a commercial break and then come back with some more of our pregame festivities for the two-way state championship game, the finale of Prep Bowl 6. depends on the youth of rural America. Well, Dick 
Bremer. Got a break during the Class A championship game. He's back with us to work the sidelines for the Class 2A championship. Winona and Moorhead. And Dick is ready with something from the sideline. Come on in. Thank you, John. I got my second win. Feeling a little bit better. With the director of the prep bowl here, John Bartz. And John, a couple of strikes against you in terms of attendance. Uh, certainly the weather was a big factor, but things seem to be running pretty smoothly here, at least going into the uh, AA championship game. Yes. Yeah, we had a little problem with the weather. and <laughs> The one thing you can't control. Can't control that, no. Try and control everything else, but not the weather, of course. And then the AA schools, the fact that they're outstate, it does hurt, but it's good for football. I think it's good. One of the things, in fact, the big thing that I enjoy about doing these high school tournaments is the degree of intensity, whether it's Ferndale or Cambridge or Moorhead or Winona. The fans are so wrapped up in, the, in their football teams. Uh, and sometimes, if you were pointing out before, that can kind of be a negative. The Cambridge fans are, are kind of on their way home already. That's right. You can see as by the two sections here that Cambridge and, and uh, uh, who else who, who, who we just have here? Lakeville. Lakeville, yeah. Lakeville left already. So... They are, they are all wrapped up in their own communities, but I still think uh, it's still good for football. It's a spectacle. All these kids point to it, and it's an excellent uh, program, I think, for football. And another thing that's nice, it's not just the football players. You've got the band members and the color guards and the flag bearers and everything. It's just a total event. That's right. It's an opportunity to showcase our music program, which, which has over 1,000 musicians here this evening, so and we, we like to show them also. John, thank you for joining us. An outstanding job again. Thank you. All right, let's go back upstairs, John. All right, Dick, to add to the pregame color, the Tartan Concert Choir, along with the band performance. Let's look on. in the nation as well. Throughout the day today, five outstanding Minnesota marching bands have been performing for our prep ball spectators. And what a fine job they've done. Congratulations, high school marching bands. And to those communities who continue to nurture and support your musical efforts. This evening's final game will continue to feature music from Minnesota's high schools. In our stands this evening are the members of five Minnesota finest high school marching bands. Our Prep Bowl Mass Band is composed of student musicians from Marshall, Owatonna, Anoka, Spring Lake Park, and Apple Valley High Schools. Thank you, bands, for outstanding performances this afternoon. And thank you for accepting our invitation to perform at one of the nation's finest student activities, Prep Bowl 6. And now, ladies and gentlemen, what better way to begin our prep ball final game than with our traditional prep ball pregame presentation. Under the direction of prep ball music chairman, Dr. Earl Benson, from Thomas Jefferson High School in Bloomington, Minnesota, here is our prep ball mass band numbering over 1,000 musicians. Ladies and gentlemen, our prep ball mass band. members of Minnesota's finest dance lines and the combined flag corps from today's performing bands. We now present our national colors.
indivisible, a pledge, a philosophy, a challenge. For it is better by far to pledge allegiance to a nation troubled by her evolution, but conceived with process for change, than to accept the discomforting immobility of another governmental form. To this principle, and on this 200th anniversary of our Constitution, we rededicate ourselves this evening as we join together in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem this evening will be sung by the Tartan Senior High School Choir. The choir is conducted by Mr. Dwayne Walleen. Please join in. for our 1,500 musicians performing for you this evening. Thank you very much. We'll take a break right here. This is Prep Bowl 6, and we have the Class 2A championship game coming up. We'll be back. Remember, 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 remember when a drive-in was a buck? A hot dog was a dime? And cars were under ten thousand dollars. Now the movie's six bucks. A hot dog's a dollar seventy-five. And cars. Well, Subaru still has a line of cars for under ten thousand dollars. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Visit your local Subaru dealer. Remember, winter we have the solution: a Toro snowthrower from Cherokee Power Equipment. Choose Toro's CCR 2000, the only snowblower guaranteed to start by the second pull, the number one rated 521, or the new Power Shift snowblower. Cherokee has a huge selection. Cherokee can handle your financing with their 30, 60, 90 day, no interest, or have easy monthly payments. Price selection service. Cherokee has it all. Cherokee Power Equipment, 63rd and Boone Avenue, Brooklyn Park. This Christmas, a lot of kids just might go to bed with visions of baby bound puppies. And baby bound purries dancing in their heads. Well, every time you buy any sandwich, fries, and a drink at Hardy's, you can get one of the babies for only $2.49. There's a new one every week, so by Christmas Eve, you could have all five. Which might give you the chance to make some dreams come true on Christmas morning. John Roney, Jim Goland, and Dick Bremer back here at Prep Bowl 6 Live from the Metrodome in Minneapolis, Minnesota. We've gone through four football games so far, nine-man, Class C, e, Class B, Class A. Now we're getting ready for the finale, the double-A matchup between a couple of unbeatens, Moorhead 
against the Winona Winhawk. Both teams back on the field now after our very elegant and inspirational pregame festivities, and they're making their way to the center part of the field. The fans from both towns coming down in the big way. See a couple clubs that many thought would not be here, but boy, they've had great seasons. And here they are, meeting for a state championship. Winona, of course, the champion coming out of Section 1, and Moorhead, the Section 7 champion. Now let's go down now on the sideline as Dick Bremer has a special guest. Paul Gale is standing by with Dick. All right, thank you, guys. Uh, Paul, as an athletic director for a Big Ten school, I know that uh, you have made a history of, of being objective, of being <laughs> fair, but being a Winona resident, I wonder if you might not be leaning one way here as we go into the just, AA championship just, game. Just slightly. Recruiting is everything in the game, <laughs> but uh, all due respect to the Moorhead Spuds, I am leaning a little bit towards that school down on the Mississippi River in the southeastern part of the state. This has to be a big thrill for you to see. Uh, I'm sure you know a lot of the family members and, and a lot of the well, people from Winona. You know, a lot of the names yeah. ring a bell. You know, the either fathers or grandfathers. In my case now, probably grandfather. It wasn't that long ago. <laughs> well, it seems like that long ago. But when I when I heard that it was the first time since 1941 when Butch Nash, our great gopher assistant coach, had the uh, Winhawks in Winona when they won their last Big Nine championship, that was quite a thrill in itself. But to see them here in the Metrodome that I happen to like, it's our home too, to see them here, my hometown, is a great thrill. I'm going to pin you down to a prediction. Well, I think our guys with uh, people like Joel Stats, and I'm only supposed to be very careful mentioning right, right. possible recruits. Don't get into trouble. No, I, I, think, I think they're going to squeak this one out. It's going to be close, but I think the, the Windhawks are going to win it. Paul, thank you for joining us, and uh, keep those fingers crossed. Thank you very much. All right, back upstairs. All right, Dick, we're just a couple of minutes away from the start of this class double A championship game in the state of Minnesota, so stay with us. Winona against Moorhead coming up. Touchstone Pictures presents Tom Selleck, Steve Gutenberg, Ted Danson. Angela, oh, you look different. What happened? I'm dry. When it comes to women, they're all American. When it comes to babies, they're all wet. About taking care of baby. You do realize she did a doodle. Oh, this is a girl. Should we be doing this? Are they always this strange? Yes. Since they got involved with another woman. Three men and a baby. I'll give you ten bucks if you stop crying. Rated PG. Now playing in theaters everywhere. Check newspaper for showtimes. Tackle the tough jobs with the gravy track assistance from Midwest Outlet Marine and Tractor. Midwest Outlet Marine and Tractor has a tough all-pro made in America lineup of Gravely's for commercial, industrial, and residential jobs, plus all the attachments you'll need. Gravely, all gear direct drive, powertrain, and steel frame. Solid defense for easy lawn care and snow removal. Call or stop by Midwest Outlet Marine and Tractor in Shakopee for a free hands-on demonstration. Once you get all the facts, you'll agree. You gotta get a Gravely. Introducing the great taste of new diet Mountain Dew. It's the delicious country cool taste of Mountain Dew with 100% Nutrisweet. Back in the Metrodome, getting ready for our last game of the day, the AA Championship. Winona the Windhawks are here. They are 13-0. And here's how they got here. They beat Burnsville, a traditional power. Then in the semifinals, came from behind. They beat Stillwater 28-14 to advance to the championship game here at the Metrodome. Moorhead on the other side. Beating Osseo in the quarterfinals, the semifinals, a 28 or a 28 to nothing victory over top-ranked Richfield. So both teams are unbeaten, 13 and 0, and they're ready to go. We'll be back with the kickoff of the Double A title game after this. This is Prep Bowl Six live from the Metrodome. Well, you know the bad news. Charlie now, Carlson is in the meeting of his life, and his shirt is perfectly dry. But that doesn't mean he smells good. Because Under Armour motor is invisible, he needs total protection. Sure, solid. If everyone would take a look sure not only helps protect against wetness, it actually kills bacteria that cause odor. 
So, Charlie, why go to work with a dry shirt and a false sense of security? Use Sure Solid and be just as sure about odor as you are about wetness. I had a mean case of the blues. My stereo, the one that saw me through three years of college and five, six serious relationships, he died. So I'm thinking, where does an audio file with a cash flow problem go to get a great stereo? Then it hit me. Best. When you're thinking of home electronics, think best. Now these are the kind of blues I can live with. When you look through a Minolta Maxim, any picture you can imagine is possible. Minolta, the leader in SLR technology with more autofocus lenses, more autofocus zooms, to help you capture more of the action, you and Minolta Maxim bring creativity to life. Maxim, the ultimate system. Only from the mind of Minolta. Welcome, everyone, to the Ludden Paper Company. I suppose you're all wondering why you were chosen to work here during the holiday season. Because we're elves? Right! Litton Paper is the largest party store in the Twin Cities. They sell more Christmas plates, napkins, and drinkware, and more decorations and gift wrap than just about anyone. So when you're that busy, you'd better hire the best. Say, you're a little small to be an elf, aren't you? Yes, who? For the Moorheads Fuzz, they're in the dark uniforms, kicking off number 26, Greg Reinhiller. Back deep, 28, Scott Heffman, and 34, Paul Klinger. Klinger is to the far side, near the 10-yard line for the Winona and Hawks. And here we go, the Class 2A Championship. At the 2-yard line, Paul Klinger. Beautiful tackle as he spun down by Doug Prokop, number 32, at the 17-yard line. Boy, he got a little tone in this one, didn't he? But the nice uh, open field tackle by Prokop. True to form, gets him around the hips and throws him down. They'll start from their own 18-yard line. And number 34, Paul Klinger, takes his position wide to the right. The quarterback is Tom Boone, number 18. Boone on the straight kill. Tackle by Scott Gothier. And here's the starting lineup for the Windhawks. Boone at quarterback. The receivers in the offensive line. Just a slight gain. Second down and ten. Three setbacks for Boone. Boone with the quick pitch. It's Hepman. And he doesn't get very much as he tries the left side. Getting up slowly, number 84, Steve Ashheim. He's a six-foot junior. Brings up third down and seven. Just underway in the Class 2A championship game. Winona and Moorhead. Moorhead and Black. Boone, wide receiver to the right side. Third and seven. Pass is complete. And breaking away from the 30-yard line, 87, Scott Curtis. Nelson, number 25, with the tackle, but a first down as Winona breaks into Moorhead territory near the 45. Now they mark it at the 47-yard line as you look at the pass play. Good job by Scott Ernest. He's also an all-conference player. And I tell you, if Nelson doesn't make this tackle, he is gone for a touchdown. He broke away from Steve Olson, number 34. And now a first down for Winona. 10-20 left in the first quarter. On the handoff, straight ahead, Scott Heffman. Tackle by Steve Ashheim. And here's the Moorhead starting defense. With Scott Gothier at nose guard. The linebackers in the secondary. 9.57 to go first quarter, no score. Winona with the football. And a quick pitch to the near side. Mark the ball at the 41 yard line. And 
here's where our participants are from in the state of Minnesota. Now they crisscross across the state. We hear Paul Gale, of course, the old Winona Flash himself, who set so many records down there, came to stardom uh, collegiately at the University of Minnesota in Moorhead by the North Dakota border. Brings up third down and four. Now split backs, Boone. And almost picked off. Pat Du got in the way, couldn't hold on. As he almost intercepted Boone's pass. Well, the Moorhead defense, they're on a roll. They've had three straight shutouts and five on the season. And Pat Du with an opportunity there. He knocks it down. Yard Nelson, number 25, drops back along with number 33, Dan Pink. And to kick, Todd Schneider averages 37 yards a kick. And he boomed that one. And with the catch made, the football is at the 14-yard line. Moorhead will take over. Nine minutes to go in the first quarter. No score, and we'll be right back to the Metrodome. Of all the reasons why American farmers take care of the land, one stands apart. One reason why farmers till the earth in ways that conserve precious topsoil. One reason why farmers plant the right crops in the right fields. Because today, the American farmer knows his land will someday be his land. This message brought to you on behalf of the American farmer by the makers of Dual Herbicide. Hi. I just moved in next door. Could I borrow a Diet Pepsi? Sure. Yes. Be right with you. When you go all out for taste, the taste to go out for is Diet Pepsi. You okay in there? Here's your Diet Pepsi. Thanks. I hope it wasn't too much trouble. No trouble at all. Diet Pepsi, the choice of a new generation. Rick Eidsness, number 12, the starting quarterback for the Moorhead Spuds, will bring his team up to the line of scrimmage near the gum. The Spuds have the ball first and 10 from their own 14-yard line. Wide receivers both ways. Coming in motion, 44 one -er. And with the football, number 32, Doug Prokop, he has the first down, and there's the Moorhead starting offense. First and ten for the football, out to the 26. A pickup of 12 for 32. Prokop. On first down, Eidsness with the football to 44. That's Warner. And he has the first down. So two carries, two first downs for the Moorhead Spuds. Well, Chris Warner is just a sophomore. He stepped in uh, with Chris Bennister, leading rusher in the year, went down with an injury, and he performed well in the semifinal, went 130 yards against Richfield in a touchdown, and picks up a nice gain there for a first. And Pete Reisdorf, 48, made the tackle for Winona. The first and 10 carry for Chris Warner, number 44. Now Eidsness, the quarterback. Sets up the pass, and he's dropped back at the 33-yard line. Richard Nasak got back there along with Scott Sether. And the loss back to the 33. KMSB Television has purchased the broadcast rights to the 87 Minnesota State High School Prep Bowl. No broadcast, rebroadcast, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this copyrighted telecast are permitted without the written authority of KMSP or the Minnesota State High School League. That's a mouthful. 7.41 to go in the first quarter. From the shotgun. Eidsness looks to the near side, and it's complete. And it might be enough for a first down as Altenburn, number 88, made the catch, and Jay Yank made the tackle for Winona. Here's the Winona defense to start the game. That is enough for a first and ten. Jay Cerise, number two, comes in with a play from the sideline, and he'll be a wide receiver to the near side. Eidsness likes to go to Cerise. 
Joe Nelson is a wing to the right side. And it's 32 Prokop coming around, taking the handoff, getting six yards. As the Moorheads buds move the ball against the Winhawks defense. Joel Stats, number 65. They call him the Lawrence Taylor of the Hawks. Well, he's the one. by Notre Dame, Nebraska, Wisconsin, and the University of Minnesota. I was saying he's the one everyone's looking at. Division one scouts and schools. The race wide to the right. Nelson, a wing to the left. He goes in motion. A quick pop, Cerise makes the catch at the 35, down to the 34-yard line. Jay Cerise, a six-foot senior, he has a lot of quickness. Well, Cerise, who caught a touchdown pass in the semifinal one, the favorite target, as you mentioned, a quarterback eyes this, and he gets him over the middle. Finally tripped up. Moorhead is moving the football. Dan Altenberg wide to the right side on first down. The give is straight ahead. Joe Nelson inside the 30-yard line to the 29, and he's stopped by Eric Nastrum, number 75. And Joel Stats is also in on the play. Dan Kostich is the coach of the Moorhead Spuds, and he talks about the keys to victory. Well, we feel it's very imperative that we get our passing game going early. Uh, we like to throw to Jay Cerise. He's our split receiver, and if he's covered, we'll go to either Doug Polkop or, or our tight end, uh, John Hagnes. It's also very big for us to establish our fullback, our sophomores, filling in for one of our captains who broke his hand two weeks ago, uh, Chris Warner. He's done a good job. Defensively, we just want to play uh, a very good football against a football team that likes to, lot of, likes to run a lot and is very physical on their, on their offensive left side. So if we can shut them down defensively on the left side, it will be a big key for us. So Joe Nelson on the sweep around the right side, but a penalty marker brings the ball back. Dick Bremer is downstairs. Let's see what he has for us. All right, the Moorhead Spuds will have to play this game without Chris Bennis. They had to play in their last game without him. He's their top ground gainer, but Chris, you injured your hand. You were telling me before this is just not a minor hand injury. Tell us the extent of the injury you suffered in the Osseo game. Well, I smashed a bone in my wrist, and I had to have like six pins placed in because I had rotated fingers, and I had to take a bone graft from my hip and place it in there. In the, place of it. the obvious question, how frustrating is it watching your team play in the state championship game and you can't play? Uh, it's tough to watch, but I'm glad that Stoke Lawner is doing a good job in replacing. Otherwise, it'd be even harder. Well, tough break for you. Congratulations on a great season. Thank you. All right, let's go back up. A holding call brings the ball back to the 40-yard line. Second down and 16. Eisner's working from the shotgun. And penalty markers everywhere on this play. Now back to back penalties. Talk about the Moorhead uh, offense. They like to keep a balanced 50-50 uh, percentage between runs and pass. And and Kostic in his seventh year, and we see the illegal motion. 5.27 left in the first quarter. No score between the Winona Winhawks and the Moorhead Spuds, both at 13 0 coming into the 2A championship game. We'll see Moorhead run out of a variety of formations. They use that double wing T. On the offense, second down. Second down, 21. When we come back, 5.27 left in the first quarter. No score. Tackle the tough jobs with the Gravely Tract Assistance from Midwest Outlet Marine and Tractor. What a lineup. Two and four wheel tractors built from the ground up. With the Gravely System, you've got all pro power for mowing, hoeing, plowing, and snow removal. Gravely, all gear to rig drive, powertrain, and steel frame. Solid defense for easy lawn care and snow removal. Call or stop by Midwest Outlet Marine and Tractor in Shakopee for a free hands-on demonstration. Once you get all the facts, you'll agree. You gotta get a Gravely. Day after day, more people depend on Subaru wagons than any imported wagon in America. And with good reason. They're reliable and durable. In fact, if Subaru didn't make your life easier... Honey, is dinner ready? Who would? Visit your local Subaru dealer. With the college basketball season beginning, John Eidsness, head basketball coach at Concordia College, is busy. His team is playing North Dakota State, so he's not able to be here to watch his son, Rick, 
in action in this 2A championship game. And Rick has a big task ahead. Second and 21. And he's going long for Cerise. say and we said at the top of the telecast that his favorite target is Cerise number two and a nice touch here and he beats the cornerback Heffman along that side he was with him stride for stride but the ball just laid in there perfectly as Morehead strikes first blood and for the point after Greg Reinhiller soccer style kicker and it's good so the Warhead Spuds score on a big strike. Isis to Jay Cerise. And I'm sure that won't be the last time we'll be calling that combination. That's going to be difficult to stop for Winona. 5.06 to go in the first quarter. Moorhead is out to a 7-0 lead. And in just a moment, we'll find out how the Winhawks will answer. Well, for Rick Isis, that's the 13th touchdown he has thrown on the season. And that was a pretty play on second and 18. So 45-yard touchdown pass, Eidsness to Cerise. An 86-yard drive on eight plays. Eidsness has thrown for 84 yards, four for four. Ryan Hiller with the kick. Number 34 is Paul Klinger. And he gives on the reverse. 48 is Reisdorf. Looking for a block. Got one to get out to the 44-yard line to give Winona good field position, and that's how the Winhawks answer the big touchdown strike. We're going to take a look at this. and little razzle-dazzle catches the spuds a little bit off guard, and you see the nice handoff. That's off to the sideline. Now watch. It quite gets the number. I'm second number 14 made a great play here. That is uh, Chad Matson, who fought off the blocker, turned him inside, and spun around to make the tackle. Yeah, he got turned around. But Winona will get even better field position as a penalty is tacked on. Let's get the call. Dead ball fall. Crystal fall. On the defense, on the run back, first down. The official for, for this game, Daryl Sanborn, Ronald Stocking, Jack Evans, and Wally Larson. On first and ten, Tom Boone gives on the handoff, straight ahead, and a loss on the play. The handoff went to number 34, Paul Klinger, and he was hit by Pat Dew, number 24. A swarming defense here. Pat Duena, Lee Held, number 40, will be there as well. As you'll see, a host of tacklers in to help make this stop. 78, Chris Olson was there. 420 and counting in the first quarter. Moorhead 7, Winona nothing. There's the Winhawks, a lot of speed. They have four backs with 4'8 speed or better in the 40. And the Winhawks operate with three setbacks, a tight formation. Second down. Boone keeps the ball, and now the pitch back. Inside the 40 and on the move, out of bounds on the near sideline. Number 28, Scott Heffman with the call, a first down run, and the ball is marked at the 23-yard line, first and 10. Scott Heffman, who gained almost 1,100 yards on the season, and Boone makes a nice job on the pitch here, waited to the last minute. Heffman, the trailer, cut to the outside, and powers his way, finally driven out of bounds there, but not before he gained another first down for the Winona Windhawks. And now Heffman goes wide to the left. Two setbacks behind Boone. To the 21-yard line. And the ball carrier, number 35, Aaron McGuire, 5'9", junior. David Boone, number 81, comes in with a play from the sideline. 
And he'll set up as a tight end on the right side. David, brother of the quarterback. Tom Boone to throw. Looks for David incomplete. With the coverage defensively. 34, Steve Olson. 3.20 left in the quarter, and now third down and eight. And the Windhawks need to get to the 18 for a first and 10. Brother and brother combination. They've probably done this in the backyard a few times in their lives. Very good coverage here, just beyond his reach. Good effort. David Boone, the 6'3 senior. Tom Boone, the junior quarterback. Scott Ernest, tight end to the left side. 28, Heffman is a wing to the left. And Heffman takes the handoff to the right side, tries to cut it back, and gets inside the 15-yard line. I don't think he has the first down. Steve Olson was there to cut him down. And it is not enough for a first and 10, a couple of yards short. With an injured player on the field, we have a timeout, 3-0-3 left in the first quarter. Moorhead 7, Winona nothing. We'll be right back. The complete line of mobile engine oils lets you choose the performance and the protection you need. Mobile lubricants are formulated to stay tough, and engines run cleaner with mobile, so you can expect longer engine life not only in your car and your truck, but in irrigation engines and tractors, construction, and industrial equipment. Mobile has it all. And you can depend on Rollins Oil Company for all your mobile products. Rollins Oil Company in Roseville, your Twin City area mobile distributor, with 36 employees to service your needs. Now, Great Clips for Hair presents The Princess. With my looks and my money, why would I go to a place that charges so little for a haircut? Okay, first, they do great haircuts. Second, I lied about my money. Great Clips for Hair, $8. Great perms and stylings, too. There's a Great Clip shop right nearby. No appointment needed. Number 40, Lee Held was the injured player, and he's getting attention on the sideline, the near sideline for the Moorhead Spuds. They lead seven to nothing. Winona is faced with a fourth and two situation, and Tom Broom brings his team up to the line. Again, three setbacks. Boom with a quick pitch to the near side. And with the first down carrier, very close to it anyway, Paul Klinger. He was tackled by Thomas Johnson, number 79. And this may call for a measurement. Right now, let's pause five seconds for station identification. This is the Minnesota Prep Bowl Network. This is KMSP-TV, Minneapolis and St. Paul. Well, let's take a look as they stretch the chains. It is not enough. So the Moorhead Spuds hold and take over on down. First and 10 from the Moorhead 14-yard line. With the Spuds leading, 7 to nothing. Right, just right, comes back out of quarterback. He hits Cerise on a touchdown play. And that covered 45 yards for the seven points in the game. The point after tacked on. Number 44, Chris Warner on the carry. Well, Moorhead trying to get a little breathing room backed up by a good defensive stand there on fourth down, fourth and short. Joel Stats made the tackle after a gain of two yards by Warner. Second down, eight. 216 left in the first quarter. This class 2A championship game. Alden Byrne, wide to the far side. Motion to the near side for Nelson. Just wants to pass. And incomplete intended. Pete Reisdorf on the coverage over there. The Wenhock going after a bag of spuds. And mash them. Right now, the spuds lead with two minutes left in the first quarter. It's amazing what some of these kids think of when uh, tournament time rolls around. 
Cerise so comes wide to the near side. Prokop wide to the right. Shotgun formation for Rick Eidsnitz. Third down eight. There's Cerise incomplete. Heffman and 45 Jay Rapinski on the coverage for Winona. So forth down a punting situation and Pat Du, number 24, will come on to do the kicking for the Spuds. Number 48 coming on for Winona. Pete Reisdorf is deep. He's back at the 50-yard line. And a minute 55 left in the first quarter. Seven, Scott Sether. He found an opening and blocked Joe's kick. Winona with a big play and the ball first and ten at the 11. We think we've seen a lot of adventures with the punts today. Several bad snaps. This just a great effort by number 77 Sether. It came storming in and almost took it right off the foot of the punter do and it rolled out of bounds at the 11 yard line. If anything more heads lucky the ball did not roll forward into the end zone. Going up to the line of scrimmage. First and ten from the 11. On the long snap count. Number 34 cutting to the outside. And in for the touchdown, Paul Klinger. So Scott Sether blocks Dew's punt. And it's followed by an 11-yard touchdown run by Paul Klinger, the six-foot junior. Seven to six. Moorhead with a one-point lead. Well, we talked all night about the blocking along the left side of the line there for Winona, and you see Joel Stats. Not only does he do it on defense, but there is a great block in offense, and Klinger just beats everybody into the end zone for the score. And the point after is good by Kevin Wiseman. The score is tied at seven with a minute 44 left in the first quarter. And that, my friends, is how quickly things can turn around. You have two good football teams. Two good early efforts for Winona and the Moorhead Spud. Well, the Winhawks taking advantage immediately of that block punt. They can score quickly. In one of the games earlier, they scored 22 points in a three and a half minute span of the second half. So they can certainly put the points on the board in a hurry. Boy, Stats was like a bulldozer working the left side of the line. And opened up plenty of room for Paul Klinger to sprint to the end zone. And then Wiseman added the point after. Wiseman will be doing the kicking for the Winhawks. Joe Nelson. Yard Nelson are back deep for the Moorhead Spurs. Low kick taken on the far side by Garrett Nelson. Up to the 30 yard line. First and 10 for the Moorhead Spurs. A minute 38 to go in the first quarter from the Metrodome. Earlier action today in the nine-man championship, Silver Lake beat Verndale 30 to 14. In Class C, Minnesota repeated as champion with a 27-7 victory over Grand Meadow. Granite Falls won the Class B, and Cambridge won in Class A. Eidsness on the pitch to the far side to Joe Nelson. Gain of about four. That one on the defense is really fired up after that block punt and the score. Well, they have several players that uh, play on both sides of the line. Uh, six to seven. They start a five-man front, but the defensive ends are stand-up type defensive ends. They have, they have forced the turnovers throughout the year. 18 intercepts, eight fumbles. They have allowed only about eight points a game. Very Alton burn wide to the near side. Joe Nelson. Straight ahead, 44. 
Chris Warner. And Warner has the first down out to the 42-yard line of the Spuds. He's stopped by David Boone, number 81. This Chris Warner is a good-looking sophomore. We talked earlier and met the man he replaced, Chris Bennis, the, who broke his hand a few weeks ago against Asio. And Scott Sether, 77, has been in hunt. Both plays in the line of scrimmage for Moorhead. The last two plays, we should say. 27 seconds to go in the first quarter. Heights just a pass. Cerise can't get it. And it's picked off at the 45-yard line. Intercepted by Pete Reisdorf, number 48, as Jay Cerise just couldn't hold on to the pass from Rick Eidsnitz. The, the right side of his shoulder pad, and alertly, Reisdorf is there to pick it off. So another big turnover here by Winona. The defense rising to the occasion. The officials mark the ball at the Winona 46. On first down, the handoff to number 28, Scott Hepkin. He gets three out to the 49-yard line. Brian Hamlin, number 75, was there defensively for Moorhead. And time has run out of the first quarter of this Class AA championship game. We have a good one for you. Winona 7, Moorhead 7. We'll be back for the second quarter after this. It was new. It came in a box. It's been hell ever since. I fought it. I begged it. Now it's old. Will it ever start again? Help me, someone. It's the beast in the garage. Why fight it? Get a new dependable Toro on sale at Lindale Hardware. They don't come in a box. They're set up and tuned so it'll work every time. What a company. And their guaranteed service means you'll never be left out in the cold. Put your beast to rest. Drive a stake through its heart. You're well, you know the bad news. Charlie now, Carlson is in the meeting of his life, and his shirt is perfectly dry. But that doesn't mean he smells good. Because Under Armour motor is invisible, he needs total protection. Sure, solid. If everyone would take a look Sure not only helps protect against wetness, it actually kills bacteria that cause odor. So, Charlie, why go to work with a dry shirt and a false sense of security? Use Sure Solid and be just as sure about odor as you are about wetness. Back live at the Metrodome. 7-7 seven, seven the score. Winona and Moorhead. Winona with the football. Second down seven from the Winhawks 49-yard line. Shifting to a wing on the right side. Klinger. Now he's in motion. A give comes inside. Quite a hit applied by Chris Olson. Olson was able to knife across and Cause a loss on the play on the handoff to 28 Scott Heffman. A loss back to the 47. So a loss of two third down nine. Klinger is a wing right. From the split backfield. Boone with the drop. And he passes incomplete. Intended for 34, Paul Klinger. The coverage provided by Pat Dew, number 24. Fourth down and nine, and a punting situation with Todd Schneider, number 80, coming on for Winona. Dan Pink and Jared Nelson will be back deep to accept the kick. Watch well, the uh, Moorhead uh, defense, a couple of stunts here, as Olsen goes to the left side, just beyond the reach of Klinger. And an end over end kick coming to the near sideline. Out of bounds, and the ball will be spotted at the 31-yard line. That's where Moorhead will take over with a tie score. Winona 7, Moorhead 7, 11-13 left in the first half. Cherry Cola. Slice, slice. And for a fresh, unique taste, Apple Slice. We got the juice. It's golden delicious. It's the Apple Sensation. Apple Slice. We got the juice. 
with real apple juice. My Shadow Force space fleet will spread darkness throughout the universe! Infra Dark has a deadly new weapon, the Shadow Bat Battlecruiser. But Starcom is ready with a high-performance, high-altitude Starmax bomber. Armed with the latest high-tech weapons, it opens up to hold the men and hold the ammo. But can it hold up Infra Dark Shadow Force? Figures and vehicles eat sold separately. The fight for freedom rages. The Perry Williams fan club here at the Metrodome. Well, he got the right gender anyway. A little bit young, but boy, the enthusiasm shown here. Outstanding all day long we've had it. What enthusiasm on the field, too, with when Winona and Moore had tied at seven. When Hawks on defense, Moorhead with the football, and number 44, Chris Warner, goes out to the 37-yard line, picks up six, and was tackled by number 75, Eric Nastro, 6'4", 230 pound senior for the Winhawks. The Winhawks have allowed nine points per game and they've allowed 184 yards in total offense to the opponents. Coming right back with it, number 44, Warner, and he has a first and 10. As the Spuds are running right at the Winhawks, Joel Stat, 65, and Jay Yank, number 86, combined to make the stop on 44 Warner. 10-41 and counting in the first half a 7-7 game. From the 43 a first down for the Spuds. This is number 36 Joe Nelson. Joe Nelson takes it out across midfield to the 46 yard line. He is just exploding through the hole. Let's go downstairs to Dick Bremer as some pretty guests I'm told. I've been standing in front of these pretty girls for the last couple minutes. They're all saying that Winona's going to win. We've got nine different reasons why Winona's going to win. Because when the team wins, everybody wins. Because we're the Winnox. Because of our Winona spirit. <laughs> we're awesome! Because we work as a team and we win as a team. Because we all work together. Because of our super coaching staff. Because we have winning fans and winning players. We've never been here before. Listening to these girls, you figure they shouldn't even bother playing the game. You may as well hand over the trophy to Winona, but I think there's some folks on the other side of the field who might disagree. Back upstairs, guys. All right, Dick. Joe Nelson with a five-yard gain. Joel Stats with the tackle. There's 36, Joe Nelson, 6'1", junior. He's in the backfield with Chris Warner. Second down, five. Boone gives to Nelson. And a collision as he ran into Jay Rapensky. But the play goes to the 36-yard line, first down. Well, Moorhead grounding it out, getting five, six yards at a, at a crack now. Nine minutes, 30 seconds until halftime in a 7-7 game. But the Moorhead Spuds are on the move. Joe Nelson is a wing to the left. Warner is the lone setback. Now Joe Nelson in motion behind Warner. Quarterback keep. And Eidsness is stopped as he gets to the 29-yard line by Scott Ernest. Rick Eidsness, number 12. 95 of 169 passing coming into the game, over 1,200 yards for the season. And is connected with his favorite target, Jay Cerise, on a 45-yard touchdown pass in this game. Moorhead with a slot to the right. Prokop. Joe Nelson on the running play. And he takes it to the 28-yard line. That will bring up third down at about three. Eric Nastrup, 75, up to make the stop for the Winona Winhawks. Eisenhuis brings them up to the line. 8-12 until halftime. The Spuds need the 25-yard line for the first down. A quick pitch. Joe Nelson. And Nelson is stopped at the 25-yard line. It appears he has the first down. The officials are spotting the ball right at the 25. 
And if that's the case, it is a first down. Well, the Spuds have been doing a lot of counter moves and man in motion. That time they just made the quick pitch out to Nelson, and he took it in for the first down. The Spuds don't waste any time in the huddle either. They come up to the line of scrimmage with Cerise out wide to the right. Warner, the lone setback. And Prokop comes inside to the 20-yard line and picks up five yards. Spins forward for the five-yard gain. Coming away from the bottom of the pile, all clingers, 75, Eric Nastrum. Oh. So it's in down in five as the Spuds continue to move, Perry. The quick cuddle does a couple things. It shows they do have some organization, and they are making very decisive on offense. Plus, it doesn't give the defense all that much time to set up and react. Agnes tied in left. Prokop, a wing to the right side. Two setbacks. Warner with the handoff, 44, and he's pushed back as he got inside the 22-yard line. Third down and a little more than a yard. Bob Ernest. Bob Ernest, the coach of the Winona Windhawks. Let's hear what he has to say about how uh, they're feeling in Winona about this football team. It's very, very wild. We've had such terrific support. The community is, uh, I can't say enough for what they've done for us. They've uh, gotten out and backed us and put up signs and posters and things in the newspaper. And uh, not only the community, uh, but the schools. Uh, everybody in Winona is really, really pulling for us in this ballgame. Jay Yank with a big play in the backfield, bringing up a fourth down situation. And Joe Nelson was hit by Yank, bringing up fourth down and three. Well, certainly the fans who know will like this by Yank. And third down and short yardage comes in from his end position and throws the ball carrier for a loss. Fourth and three. Ike Nelson quarterback. Drops, look for Cerise, then went out to Nelson, who is dropped for a loss at the 25-yard line, and that's where Winona will have the ball when we come back. 5.57 left in the first half. Moorhead and Winona are tied at seven. Back with more of the AA Championship in just a moment. Celebrate the holidays in style with Holiday Stemware from Arby's. They're yours for a special price when you buy a medium or large soft drink. Fill these beautifully etched glasses right up to their 22-karat gold rim. So, however you celebrate the holidays, celebrate in style with Holiday Stemware from Arby's. You've done it again! I'm gonna get you, Rubik! It's Rubik's Magic Puzzle, the new challenge from the incredible Erno Rubik. The cube was easy. I dare you to link the rings. I did it! You didn't do it right. <sighs> Rubik's Magic. Pick it up, you'll never put it down. Now that you've linked three rings, try unlinking five rings. It's even tougher. Sometimes it's even tough for me. Rubik's Magic Puzzle. Unlink the rings. New from Matchbox. The score is 7-7. 5.57 left in the first half. Winona and Moorhead playing for the Class 2A championship in Minnesota high school football. Capping off the Prep Bowl, Prep Bowl 6 at the Metrodome. Fifth and final game. And we have been entertained in this first half for certain. Now Boone at quarterback. On first down. No running room on the right side for Scott Heffman. Heffman was tripped up by Jared Nelson, number 25, and Olson, Olson knifing through on the play, number 34. And we asked Olson about his activities outside of football at the workout yesterday. We talked to Mr. Olson. Um, photography is my, my main hobby. I love to take outdoor shots, um, wildlife, flowers, and some other sporting events, such on the collegiate level especially. And number 34, Paul Klinger with the carry. Second down and long. Now it's third and about 10. Got a six yard pickup. Dick is downstairs with the head football coach of the Minnesota Golden Gophers, Dick. 
Thanks, John. John, good to is with us. John, you've uh, had a chance to watch this game for about a quarter and a half. What are your impressions? Who do you like so far? There's a lot of quickness on the field, and uh, I thought it was going to be an offensive game, but the uh, special teams are playing a part. Uh, it's going to be one of those games where some key players are going to have to make some plays, either that number two, the receiver for Moorhead, or uh, maybe get some big blocks again out of that big offensive line for uh, Winona. But it's been a great day for football here in the state of Minnesota. It's been a long day, I'll tell you that. I, I didn't know if there'd be a close game until uh, Lakeville really showed some poise coming back and making that a game uh, in the last one. You were mentioning this is a little bit different format from when you went to high school in Pennsylvania. Yeah, well, they had a uh, state playoff in western Pennsylvania. Uh, and in the coal mine region of Scranton, Wilkesbury, they had what they called a, a regional playoff. But uh, around the Philadelphia area, we didn't. Uh, it's a little more, but there's still not a true state playoff in the state of Pennsylvania. This is great, though. Uh, uh, th these, these guys all day have really played hard. You've seen some outstanding play, uh, talented athletes. And one of, the, one of the real treats for us is we had 640 some kids in our camp this summer and of course we're well aware of the seniors but I've also had a chance to watch some of the sophomores and juniors that were in that camp and really get to see them play and it all bodes well for uh, Minnesota football not only in the high schools but also for us. John thanks so much for joining us. Okay Dick and thank you all for telecasting it to the people of the state. All right let's go upstairs. Good kick by Todd Schneider. Dan Pink brings it back to the 35, and that's where Moorhead will put the ball in play when we come back. 3.14 left in the first half. Winona and Moorhead stand tied at seven in this double-A title game. Touchstone Pictures presents Tom Selleck, Steve Gutenberg, Ted Danson. Angela, oh, oh, you look different. What happened? I'm dry. When it comes to women, they're all American. When it comes to babies, they're all wet. I don't know anything about taking care of babies. You do realize she did a doodle. Oh! Dude, this is a girl. Should we be doing this? Are they always this strange? Yes. Since they got involved with another woman. Three men and a baby. I'll give you ten bucks if you stop crying. Rated PG. Now playing at theaters everywhere, check newspapers. A 43-yard punt for Todd Schneider. Return of four yards for Dan Pink. Moorhead's ball first and ten. Eidsness with the give to Prokop. 32 and across the 40. Loose football. And was the play blown dead? I believe so. I think the ball popped loose as Prokop hit the ground. And that's the rule. The ball belongs to Moorhead. Nine-yard gain, second and one. To Prokop back on the counter, and he will cut back inside. Now he was down before the ball came squirting out of there. Talk about it's been a busy fall season for sports in Winona. Boys cross-country team, state champion. Girls cross-country team, third in state. Girls tennis, seventh. Eisnitz going for Cerise. Out of bounds. Jay Rapinski. Repensky is Pete Reisdorf. There you go. That's how you got on TV. Took a lot of thought putting that sign on. But you can't see him. He's got the sign in front of him. <laughs> or her. Or her. There you go. Sorry. 234 left in the first half. Third down, one. First down, one or with the carry. And he's thrown back by the Windhawks. It's a first down for Moorhead. And the clock is stopped to the Chains will move up. Maysack and Sether leading the charge, but it was a first down carry for Chris Warner, number 44, for the Moorhead Spuds. Now Warner, the lone setback, Joe Nelson in motion. Nice to pass, out to Nelson. He gathers it in for a gain of four or five. Good concentration by Nelson on that. He juggled it a little bit, but held down, and Rod Brown was just breathing down his neck. Number 38, the safety man, the 5'10", 130-pound junior. 
Open season on him, but he held on for the game. Second down and six. From the 47-yard line of the Windhawks. Moorhead and Winona tied at seven. A minute 37 left in the first half. Play action pass. Under pressure and he's sacked. Number 79 is Richard Nasak. 6'4 senior with the tackle. And the loss all the way back to the 44 of the Spuds. Well, he got by his blocker, missed assignment there, and you see number 79 just slicing through. And, and Jay well, Yank coming over to help finish off the play. 79, Nasak with the sack. Third down, 15. Shotgun for Rick Eidsness. Under pressure again. And complete. With the catch, the tight end, John Hagness. And he is nowhere near first down territory as a tempers player. Fourth down. David Boone. 81 over on the play, and let's take a look. Now, Moorhead showing the shotgun first time I think we've seen it today. He doesn't buy the jersey. And Agnes objected not to the initial tackle, but the polishing off. So the punt by Pat Dew. And Moorhead is going to pin Winona deep inside the one yard line. Four seconds left in the first half. You can't get much closer than that. And Dew got the job done with a 47 yard punt. And great coverage. Taking advantage of the roll and pinning the ball up against the goal line with Winona taking over on offense in four seconds before halftime in a 7-7 game. I was expecting a few more points than this. Expected both teams to move the ball pretty well on the ground. Well, they're both uh, there's some talented and very potent rushing attacks, but defense has held center stage here in the first half. Special team work by Winona. And after that initial drive by Moorhead, capped off by the touchdown pass. A little mix up on how much time is actually left here in the second quarter in the first half. And time has run out. That's the end of the first half. The ball is set, the clock started. The four seconds ticked off. And the score at the end of the first half will play in this Class 2A championship. Winona 7, Moorhead 7. We'll be right back to the Metrodome. Carlson is in the meeting of his life and his shirt is perfectly dry. But that doesn't mean he smells good. Because Under Armour motor is invisible, he needs total protection. Sure, solid. If everyone would take a look Sure not only helps protect against wetness, it actually kills bacteria that cause odor. So Charlie, why go to work with a dry shirt and a false sense of security? Use Sure Solid and be just as sure about odor as you are about wetness. It's the Subaru year-end clearance. The greatest Subaru deals in Subaru history. Stupendous Subaru savings. Hold it. Instead of hype, Subaru gives you up to $1,500 factory cash back or 3.9 finance. Enough. You won't be seeing this commercial much longer. Up to $1,500 back or 3.9 will be gone. Subaru's last blast. It's about to self-destruct. Subaru, we build our reputation by building a better car. If you're thinking of smoking cigarettes, there's something you might want to know. Hi! 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 
smokers have bad breath. Halftime of our class double A game. Let's go down to the field and Dick Bramer. Dan Kostich is with us, Dan. It uh, was pretty much a hard-hitting defensive first half. Yeah, very so much, very much. We gave him a, a golden opportunity when he blocked a punt on us. And you can't do that in big ball games. You know, that let him score and put him right back in the ball game. Offensively, you scored on that big play, but what can you do to try to open things up a little bit and free up your offense? Well, we're going to work on a few things and uh, adjustments at halftime. We're just not getting off the ball the way we'd like to. And they're a good football team. Uh, it's going to be a big, big challenge for us second half. All right, good luck on the second okay. half. Let's go back upstairs. Thank you, Richard, and thanks for Coach Costage for stopping by. One of the big treats we look forward to every year to the Prep Bowl is the halftime extravaganza of the double-A title game, and let's enjoy our halftime festivities here at the Metrodome, Prep Bowl 6. Welcome once again, ladies and gentlemen, to halftime at Minnesota High School's Football Classic. Prep Bowl 6. This evening, the Minnesota State High School League places its halftime spotlight on musicians from throughout the state of Minnesota. Throughout the day today, five of Minnesota's finest marching bands have presented halftime and pregame exhibitions here in the Metrodome and for our television audience statewide. These young men and women have represented over 60,000 young Minnesota musicians who participated actively in high school music programs throughout the state on a daily basis. Now, at this time, we would like to have the opportunity of meeting each of these Prep Bowl select bands individually. From Apple Valley and conducted by Mr. David Hagner, here is the Apple Valley High School Marching Band. Western Minnesota and conducted by Mr. Wayne Ivers. Here is the Marshall High School Marching Band. Conducted by Mr. Michael Schleicher and from our northern suburbs, here is the Spring Lake Park High School Marching Band.
Lincoln, Minnesota, and conducted by Mr. James Thuleen, the Owatonna High School Marching Band. From our northern suburbs and conducted by Mr. John Lace, the Anoka High School Marching Band. marching bands individually. Now it's time to put them all together under the musical direction of Prep Bowl's music director, Dr. Earl Benson. Here's our 1,000 member Prep Bowl mass band performing one of the nation's finest marches. A selection written by the March King, John Philip Sousa, and dedicated to the United States Marine Corps, it is especially appropriate on this, the 200th anniversary of our Constitution. Here is Dr. Benson and the mass band with Sousa's Semper Fidelis.
Well, the sounds of John Philip Souza echoing in splendor in the Metrodome of Prep Bowl 6, back with more halftime festivities of our Class AA championship game after this commercial break. I've known about Fender guitars since I was a kid. So when Lee wanted a guitar, I knew just where to go. Schmitz. Fender's the world's most popular guitar. Still American, still built the same, and still the leader. Schmidt showed me every Fender, all at surprisingly affordable prices. So I figured, why not give him the best? Cherish the history, play the future. From just $1.99 at Schmidt's. Okay, call me a coward. I just don't like running all over town looking for the perfect Christmas gift. And if I mess up, I'll be sleeping with Harry. I need to think of one place with a lot to choose from. Nothing but big names and little prices. I think I'm in trouble. Harry will stick by me. He's man's best. Yeah, best. When you're thinking of one-stop Christmas shopping, think best. Taught him everything he knows. Until now, plowing through what the snowplow left behind was one of winter's toughest challenges. Now, Toro introduces the exclusive Power Shift Snow Thrower. The Power Shift automatically puts more weight on the front for a more powerful bite on winter's toughest snow. The new Toro Power Shift. The only challenge left? Getting out of the driveway to go buy one. Save up to $100 on Toro Tuesday Snow Throwers at Clears Nursery, John's Radiator, and Johnson's Small Engine. Downstairs and listen to the sounds of the Tiger of San Pedro. Let's hear it for our trumpets, ladies and gentlemen. And a good percussion section as well. A job well done. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we want to bring out eight of Minnesota's finest dance lines. Each year, the Minnesota State High School League extends an invitation to the top two Minnesota dance lines in each of four categories who were the winners in the Minnesota Dance Line Association competition held each spring in our state. This year, we are pleased to present to you those winners. Our prep ball dance lines for 1987 include the Kicksters from Brainerd, the Bravettes from Burnsville, the Rangerettes from Crosby Ironton, the Lakeliners from Lakeville, the Highliners from Northfield, the Tapairs from Richfield, the Lakeettes from Arconia, and the Trojets from Wyzetta High Schools. All are winners. How about a nice hand for eight of Minnesota's finest dance lines? And now an opportunity to see them in action with music this time for the 1980s. Here are our dance lines in an up-tempo arrangement of a popular song called Dancing on the Ceiling.
baselines. Outstanding. Are they hot or what? You know, the Minnesota State High School League would like to make the musical presentations at this time to those outstanding musical groups who have been represented here today in Prep Bowl 6. Appearances at Prep Bowl are made by the Minnesota State High School League on the basis of musical excellence and previous outstanding musical records in the state of Minnesota. Making the presentations this evening will be Mr. Richard Foley, music representative on the Minnesota State High School League Board of Directors. The first presentation will go to our Prep Bowl Choir from Tartan High School. Will the choir president please come forward to accept the award? <laughs> Will the captains of the eight prep school select dance lines please come forward to accept their plaques as I read their schools. Now these schools were the number one and number two winners in the Minnesota Association of Dance Line competition held this past spring. In Class B, Crosby Ironton. <laughs> Northfield, Minnesota. In Class A, Lakeville. And Northfield. In class AA, Brainerd. And Richfield. In class AAA, Burnsville. And Wyzetta. Also in Class B, receiving an award is Waconia. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the drum majors and commanders of the five Minnesota Prep School Select Bands, please come forward to accept their plaques as I read their schools representing the finest high school bands in Minnesota. Ladies and gentlemen, may I please introduce this year's Prep Bowl Select Bands, Oatana High School. Marshall High School. Spring Lake Park High School. Anoka High School. And Apple Valley High School. <laughs> Thank you very much. Another round of applause for these outstanding musicians from Minnesota schools. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, to conclude this evening's halftime show, Dr. Benson has chosen a musical selection which is very appropriate for this year's program. Our Constitution begins with those famous words, We the people, people who care about life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, and one another. Our final selection this evening hopefully will send a musical message to all to hear, for it represents a statement to the world to hear. The words presented read, love in any language, straight from the heart, pulls us together, never apart. Once we learn to speak it, all the world will hear. Love in any language, fluently spoken here. The members of our dance line will be signing the selection as the mass bands and from our northern suburbs, our choir also will be singing with the mass bands. This wonderful song with the signing by the dance line. Love 
in any language. Gentlemen, the 1987 Prep Bowl Mass Band Choir and Dance Lines. Thank you very, very much. We're at halftime. Winona and Moorhead are tied 7 to 7 in this class AA championship game. What a halftime show, huh? We'll be back with more from the Metrodome right after this. <laughs> I am looking for presents for my husband and my son, and I have seen shirts, ties, books, records. But you know, they love sports, so I thought maybe you had something here. What's their favorite sport? Mm, baseball, I guess. Or maybe it's football. You know, come to think of it, they love basketball, boxing, hockey, tennis. They're real big sports fans. There is a perfect present for guys like that, but I can't sell it to you. Well, why not? It's Sports Illustrated. Sports Illustrated. America's number one sports magazine. It gives them 55 weeks of great sports coverage, including the year in sports, the baseball preview, the football spectacular, the basketball preview, and the annual swimsuit issue. Yeah, I know they'll like that. This year, they'll also get one of Sports Illustrated's biggest issues ever, the 88 Olympic Preview Edition, with an exclusive look at all the major events, like hockey, skating, skiing, no one covers the Olympics like Sports Illustrated. They'll really like that. And you'll like getting Sports Illustrated at the Christmas sale price. Over 60% off the cover price. A sale before Christmas? And no crowded stores. Because you don't go shopping for SI, you just call. No shopping, no crowds? Very nice. Just call their toll-free Christmas hotline for 55 issues of Sports Illustrated at the Christmas sale price. Three monthly payments of $15.99 each. You won't even be billed till next year. Well, it sounds like the perfect present for any man. On sale, no shopping, no catch. Uh-uh. You get 55 issues of Sports Illustrated at the Christmas sale price, including all the preview issues, the swimsuit issue, and the 88 Olympic preview edition. And even a card for under the tree. Just by calling toll-free, 1-800-234-8300. I'm sold. <laughs> Where's the phone? Uh, over there. What's that number? 1-800-234-8300. 
I know what I'm getting my boyfriend. And my dad. Terrific yeah, idea. Yeah, it's a great idea. Back at the Metrodome, John Rooney, Perry Williams, Dick Bremer, as we get ready for second half action in this Class AA championship game. We're all tied up at seven. The Windhawks from Winona against the Moorhead Spuds. The Spuds have found their way back onto the field after that very entertaining halftime uh, presentation on the direction of Dr. Earl Benson and all the bands and dance lines and the choral group that was on hand. The uh, touchdown pass, the from Rick Eidsness to Jay Cerise, responsible for the Moorhead scoring at a 45 yards. That put up the Spuds 7 0. But then uh, John Rooney, the big play defense, the special teams came to life for Winona. Scott Sether blocked a punt. And then on the next play, a touchdown run of 11 yards by Paul Klinger. The point after was good. One play, 11 yards. And after. The block caught a 7-7 score for Moorhead and Winona, and that's the way the half ended. And what a good first half of football. There was a lot of hitting going on out there. The defenses certainly played well, and there were some big plays. There's to the All-State team, and we have seen many here throughout the day. Chris Mine, of course. From Minnesota, leading that team to successive state titles. And down on the line they go. Might with a record day today. Leading his Minnesota team to a championship. We'll give you the scores of the other games in just a moment. As we see some more of the All-State team. Rick Meyer, Rod Smith, the one out of the Roseville. Meyer, of course, big running back. Bennett Falls, Jeremy Wicks. Interception, a return for a touchdown, leading Cambridge to another Class A title. So uh, the All-State team in Minnesota, and we've had all day of action. Uh, high school football here in KMSP, Prep Bowl 6. And let's go down to Dick Bremer, who has the Winona coach. Bob Ernest is with us. Bob, you had an extended halftime to talk to your team. What did you tell them in a tie ball game? Uh, we just told them to take their, uh, as many of their clothes off as they could and, and cool off and just relax. We tried to make a couple minor adjustments uh, defensively, and uh, we think that we're going to uh, try some different things offensively this half. But basically, it was just to try to get them down there and get off their feet. It's warm down here. You say it's warm. You think that's a major factor in the game, then? I think it is, because a couple of our kids have come off, and they, uh, they have not come off in 13 ball games. Okay, well, it's late in the season. Maybe some of the guys are getting a little tired. Thanks, Bob. Join your team, and let's go back upstairs. Well, you also should mention that Winona does have several players that do play uh, both sides of the ball, so the team might be a factor there as we head in the second half. Take a look at the Winona touchdown you're talking about, John, right after the block punt. Watch the way 65 Joel Stats clears out the left side, and the touchdown run for Paul Click. Just made it in. And we've been told that a couple of the Moorhead players will not be returning because of injuries. First off, Jared Nelson, number 25, is out with the concussion, and he'll not be back. The other, Lee Held, out with a concussion. And here's the Moorhead touchdown, and this play didn't take very long. No, out of the shotgun, and it's a perfectly thrown ball here from Eisenhuis to his favorite receiver throughout the season, Jay Cerise, number two, right over the shoulder, looked right into it, found the end zone for the score. Cerise has dropped a couple of other passes, but that was very well executed. The touchdown, the point after good. Quick rundown of the other title games. Nine men, Silver Lake beating Verndale 30-14. Class C, Minneota 27, Grand Meadow 7. Brandon Falls, 43-20 over Ely in Class B. Class A, Cambridge, 28-14 over Lakeville. We're getting ready for second-half action. Uh, statistically, we should mention that uh, the Moorhead uh, Spuds, statistically anyway, uh, leading Winona in most categories. You see him tucked in the west part of the state. We're taking a look at the first-half stats, and Moorhead with the the edge offensively in possession and yardage, but that special team play, the block punt certainly was the great equalizer in the first half as the Winhawks capitalized quickly on that 10-yard run. So we're all knotted up. 
in this second half we go for the championship game. Hi, right, Perry. I'd like to thank uh, Jeff Miller Moorhead who has been spotting the Moorhead Spuds for us. Athletic director Winona Don Cloggy has been spotting uh, in the second half. Jay Cloggy is going to take over. And uh, also, uh, thanks to Scotland Dean who helped us spot the game just before this one. A lot of people getting involved today in our coverage of Prep Bowl 6. And we're ready to go. And to do the kicking, Kevin Wiseman, number 20 for Winona. Back deep, Dan Pink, 33, and Joe Nelson, 36. And it's Pink who fields the ball at the 15. And runs into the tackle out at the 26-yard line. Nystrom and Wilson coming up on the stop. So Pink with the return, 5'7", senior. And the Spuds have the ball in a tie game just underway in the third quarter, a 7-7 contest. Now Cerise goes out wide to the far side. Wing to the right side. That's Pro Cop 32. And a running play on first down out to the 29-yard line. The tackle made by Sether. And on the run, it's Warner, 44. Stats in on the play as well. Sether, the fellow who blocked the punt. One play later, Winona scored. As they come up to the line, the Spuds have Alton Byrne to 88, wide to the far side. Prokop, a slot to the right. Running play, Warner, 44. Out across the 35-yard line, they'll mark it at the 36. Stats on the tackle along with Heffman. And right now, let's pause five seconds for station identification. This is the Minnesota Prep Bowl Network. This is KMSP-TV, Minneapolis and St. Paul. For Jim Gilliland, Dick Bremer, Barry Williams, I'm John Rooney. 10.45 left in the third quarter of this Class 2A championship, the fifth and final game of Prep Bowl 6. 7-7, Winona and Moorhead tied. Moorhead with the football, third down one. Warner with the break. Out across midfield, spins to the 44-yard line of the Winona Windhawks, and he's spun down by Heffman and Reisdorf. Well, Wanner, who had uh, 41 yards to lead the Spuds in rushing in the first half, breaks it open here all the way into the secondary before he's taken down by three Windhawks. David Boone in on the play, 81. Good block there by Prokop on the trap. Well, he put a move on Klinger to open the run, and a first down into Winona territory. Warner comes right back, takes the ball to the 40, inside the 40, gained four yards. Stats and Nastrum. Coming up defensively for Winona. Both teams 13-0 coming into the game. Playing to a 7-7 standoff at the end of the first half. Out of the game for Winona, Rob Brown coming in with a play defensively from the sideline. Number 81, David Boone. Now Prokop splits to the right side. Cerise wide left. In motion, Warner. And the carry, number 36, Joe Nelson. He hit the hole quickly. Had plenty of room, too. Paul Klinger met him. And that's enough for a first and ten. Well, the spud staying on the ground. Why not? It's working so far. And there you see he stumbled a little bit behind the blocking attempt by Warner. And a first down. Joe Nelson in motion. Nelson with the handoff. And a big gainer inside the 25 to the 24-yard line. Eric Nastrum and Scott Heffman combining on the stop for Winona as Moorhead is driving the ball. Nine minutes to go in the third quarter. Well, you got to credit the guys up front opening the holes to start the second half. Pettit, Hagman, Hines, Vadeen, and Larson. Second down two. The attendance for Prep Bowl, 34,745. 44, Warner with the carry. And close to a first and 10. He's thrown back by Nasak, number 79. Sether, 77. And I think they're going to call the change in. They need to measure for the first and ten with 8.30 left to play and a 7-7 score for the Metrodome. 
Uh, we talk, talk about the attendance, 34, 745. But remember, early this morning, it was sleeting and it was miserable weather conditions for a lot of the fans to get here. First down for Morehead, so they keep the drive going. But a lot of buses, Burndale had several buses that had to turn back because of the weather conditions. People just could not get here. So pretty good turnout for front pole six. Rick Eitzes, number 12. Sends a wide receiver to the right side. Water, 44. All the way to the 15-yard line. That's a gain of seven. Second down three. Stats and Brown on the tackle. This is the kind of thing I expected in the first half. And Moorhead has had success keeping the ball on the ground. Now Jay Cerise, number two, goes wide to the right side to the top of your screen. Double wing formation. Water 44 is hit as he gets the ball and he's thrown down. He was hit at the 15-yard line. He's met immediately. Klinger, 34, came in on the play. And let's take a look. Well, he talked earlier about this very stiff and rigid uh, defense by Winona. There's 45, Jay Rapensky, who got in and was able to wrestle number 44, Chris Warner, down. Third down. Three yards for a first down. Warner in motion. Pitch to Nelson. And he is spun down. He is slammed down. Scott Ernest with the tackle. As he grabbed Joe Nelson and threw him to the turf. And he did it with a vengeance as they come up big here on third down. Watch him grab him by the jersey. The quick pitch left. He got the left hand, then the right hand, and spun him around to the ground for the loss of three. Greg Reinhiller comes on number 26. He'll be attempting a 35-yard field goal. He's one for three on field goal tries this year, hitting a 28-yarder. This is for 35 yards. long enough. It's good. Greg Reinhiller with a 35-yard field goal. It's 6.23 to go in the third quarter, and that gives Moorhead a 10-7 lead on Winona. And we'll be right back to the Metrodome. Nice going, Mustang. Have one on me. Roger, Denmother. Great. Trouble with your refreshment system? A negative. Where is he? Hi, boys. Diet Pepsi, the choice of a new generation. And for great Diet Pepsi taste without caffeine, try Diet Pepsi Free, the caffeine-free choice of a new generation. It's the Subaru year-end clearance, the greatest Subaru deals in Subaru history. Stupendous Subaru savings. Hold it. Instead of hype, Subaru gives you up to $1,500 factory cash back or 3.9 financing. Enough! You won't be seeing this commercial much longer. Up to $1,500 back or 3.9 will be gone. Subaru's last blast. It's about to self-destruct. Subaru, we build our reputation by building a better car. Breaks the tie. 10 to 7, Moorhead with the lead and 6.23 to play in the third quarter. Ryan Hiller will be doing the kicking. Thirty-four is Paul Klinger. Out across the twenty-five, and the ball will be spotted near the twenty-eight yard line. Now for a receiver back to take in that kickoff. Here's what it looks like coming out of the dome roof. A little easier than the baseball because it's not white, certainly. But uh... Eric Jernell, the cameraman with the shot, and beautiful work all day for our crew. We've had great isolation shots, and we've been able to show you all the big plays of Prep Bowl Six. After braving the bad weather, everybody made it. The president accounted for for a 9 o'clock airtime this morning. And tip of the cap to all of those on our crew for fine work today. 5.52 left in the third quarter. And boom with the ball. And he's tackled from behind by Brian Hamlin. 
as Boone tested the right side. He was able to pick up a yard. Second down nine. Tom Boone, six foot junior quarterback for Winona. Play coming in from the sideline. With the play, 88, Lance Westby. Split backs for Boone. He wants to throw the ball. Hit as he throws, and it's caught by Westby, who just came into the game. Out to the 44-yard line and a first down. Well, great job by Tom Boone, the quarterback. He was under lots of pressure. Watch the Moorhead defense come in and right in his face. He gets it off right before he's tackled and completes the reception for a first down for the Windhawks. And Westby, who brought the play in, his number was called, and 88 made the catch. From the 44, Winona in its own territory. And on the reverse loose ball, and the Windhawks fall on it. Ball was fumbled by Heffman, and Stats was able to jump on the ball to keep control. Let's go down on the field now to Dick Bremer. The FCC repealed the fairness doctrine. We still think it's a good idea. Earlier we had nine reasons why Winona's going to win. Here are eight reasons why Moorhead's going to win. Because Mr. Costas deserves it more than anybody else. They deserve it for all their hard work. This is their year, because we believe in our team. This has been their goal since the beginning of the year, and they're going to get it. Because we rock. We roll. We, we get down and book it! And they're leading 10-7. All right, 409 to go in the third quarter. The pressure's on and sack this boom. Chris Olson, Brian Hamlin rushed in and got the sack with the ball marked back at the 31 yard line. Well, Hamlin was the first one through, number 75, coming on the blitz, and he'll force Boone to go back to the other side right in the waiting arms of number 78, Chris Olson, for a big loss. Well, Boone didn't have time to think about the pass play. He had to turn and run. He had no choice. And couldn't escape the sack. Three and a half minutes left in the third quarter. 10-7, Moorhead with the lead. And third down, 23 for a Winona first down. The Winhawks have to get to the 46-yard line of Moorhead for the first and 10. The running play goes nowhere. 34, Paul Klinger stacked up. Making the hit. Number 50, Gothier. Scott Gauthier, 5'11", junior, number 50. And now a punting situation with Todd Schneider, number 80, on the punt. Average 37 yards a kick for the season. Back deep, number 14, Chad Matson, number 33, Dan Pink. A wobbly kick, he shanked it. Bounces past midfield. And the ball will be spotted at the 48-yard line of Moorhead. That's where the Spuds will have it first and 10 with 2.49 to play in the third quarter when we come back with Moorhead leading 10-7. We'll be back. If you like being bad, very bad, so bad that you're good, this is the album for you. Bad Animals. The new album by heart. Caged and waiting for you now. LP is set on sale with Music Land for $7.99. Compact this also. Well, you know the bad news. Charlie Carlson is in the meeting of his life, and his shirt is perfectly dry. But that doesn't mean he smells good. Because Under Armour motor is invisible, he needs total protection. Sure, solid. If everyone would take a look Sure not only helps protect against wetness, it actually kills bacteria that cause odor. So, Charlie, why go to work with a dry shirt and a false sense of security? Use Sure Solid and be just as sure about odor as you are about wetness. Moorhead with the lead, 10-7, and the football. 2.45 and counting in the third quarter. Rick Eisness is the quarterback. Double wing set. Wide receiver to the far side. And on the inside, handoff, Prokop. Tackle by Joel Stats, number 65. Stats with some pretty good quickness, and he can provide a wallet, can he? 
Six three two twenty, a senior all state, as we mentioned several times. Look at how that helmet's decorated. Let's watch the play. Well, Stats has such great penetration in the backfield. He was already by the blockers were already by him and just missed him. And just for good measure, on the stop was Naystrom. Second down nine, Eisner's from the shotgun, and there's Cerise, and he drops another one. Cerise, after making a beautiful touchdown reception, a 45-yard play back in the first quarter, has had trouble catching the ball since. And yeah, that time he took his eyes off it once again, and he had that one that popped off the shoulder pad for an interception, and here, See, he turned around to look upfield before he had control of the football. And in his defense, Eisner's had plenty on that ball, too. It was zipped over there. Well, certainly a catchable ball. 4-1. Up in the third quarter, Eisner's from the shotgun. And he threw that one behind his intended receiver, Dan Altenburn. Reisdorf was back there defensively for Winona. And a punting situation coming up now for the Moorhead Spud. Pat Dew, number 24, who has had a punt blocked in the game, will be on to do the kicking. And Reisdorf is deep for Winona. Dew from inside the 40. And he gets this one away, and he shanks it to the right. And from the 39-yard line, that's where the Windhawks will set up with a minute 45 to go in the third quarter and Moorhead leading 10 to 7. 12-yard punt. We'll be right back. Touchstone Pictures presents Tom Selleck, Steve Gutenberg, Ted Danson. Angela, oh, oh, you look different. What happened? I'm dry. When it comes to women, they're all American. When it comes to babies, they're all wet. About taking care of baby. You do realize she did a doodle. Oh! This is a girl. Should we be doing this? Are they always this strange? Yes. Since they got involved with another woman. Three men and a baby. I'll give you ten bucks if you stop crying. Rated PG. Now playing at theaters everywhere, check newspapers. The road to Olympic gold is full of little bumps. Health problems can come out of nowhere mm -hmm. and hit where you can least afford it. Uh, that's why America's athletes turn to health coverage from Blue Cross and Blue Shield. The same name that protects a million Minnesotans like you. And with the wear gold, HMO gold. And senior gold. You don't have to be a gold medal winner to get that great c c c coverage. <laughs> turn to gold. With Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Minnesota. Well, the Winhawk trying to rally his club back. 10 to 7, Morhe with the lead. When Hawks have the ball. Undefeated records on the line. State championship on the line in Class 2A. Morehead leading 10 to 7. Here comes Boone. Good quickness to the outside. And out of bounds after a gain of about three yards. Trying to turn the corner. Dan Pink is over there to usher him out of bounds. Pat Du and Chad Matson coming up defensively as well. Well, for a while, it looked like it might be worse. He had to take a few yards back on his run, but Tom Boone does a nice job on the option here to pick up three yards. We're finally driven out of bounds. Second down seven from the 42-yard line. Wing left. Wing on the handoff. And on his number 34, Paul Klinger's tackle by Dan Pink of Moorhead. And by running the left side, it'll bring up third down at about two. Well, the left side is the strength of their offense and their running game, certainly. On the likes of Spruce, Stats, and Nestrom. Inside a minute to go in the third quarter. Third and two. 76, Scott Pettit comes in defensively for the Spuds. He digs in on the line. Wing to the right side, clear. Quick pitch goes to the left. And a first down. What a hit over there. On the carry, number 28, Scott Heffman. And he was met by Pat Dew coming up from the secondary. Well, I think everybody knew this was going left, but some decent blocking is 
Heffman takes it in, but watch that pop there by number 24. Dew came over from his linebacking position. He had to hurdle his blocker. He had to hurdle his man. That's when Dew met him. Heffman carries for the first down. That's a nice how do you do. And from midfield. Yeah, it's been about three games since you've come up with one of those. It's pretty good. Fumble. And Moorhead has it. Number 50, Scott Gothier. And here's the play. Heffman with the carry. And Scott really never had the ball, and he saw those black jerseys in front of him. And, and it was Gothier who came away with the football. So from the 49 in Moorhead territory, eight seconds and counting in the third quarter. Eidsness number 12. Rick Eidsness, the quarterback. And time has run out in the third quarter. They can't get the play away. We have 12 minutes of football to go in the 1987 Minnesota high school football season. This is the double A championship game and Moorhead is leading Winona 10 to 7. We'll be back with the fourth quarter, so stay with us. Home heating have you in a sweat? Compare off-peak electric thermal storage with our old system. Off-peak ETS is safe, dependable, clean. He shouldn't be allowed to play with fire. He can't even pick up his socks. ETS is inexpensive to operate and 100% efficient. He's just cheap and needs a boost off the couch. There's one common thing. They're both off-peak. Off-peak ETS. Relax, it's electric. Call these nice folks. the football from the Spuds 49 yard line and 12 minutes on the board for the fourth quarter now. Eichsness with the inside running play and not very much room at all as Joel Stats closing any opening there at all. Chris Warner on the carry. And there's Mr. Stats number 65. Warner 44 with the handoff here. No check that 36 Nelson. As Warner carried through his fake but it was Nelson who was met by Stats. Well, that time Joel went off the line a little bit. Great instinct. And they went over to the hole that was there and plugged it quickly for a gain of only one. 13 carries, 54 yards for Nelson. And on the straight ahead running play, Joe Nelson tackled by Richard Nasak. Bring up third down. About six yards for the first and 10. Nastrum, 75. He was also in on the play for Winona. Third down, a little more than five yards to go for the first and ten as the Spuds need the 41-yard line of the Winhawks for the first down. See if he goes to Cerise, his top of the screen. On the shotgun. Einsness goes to Cerise. He makes that catch first down. And the tackle across the way by 28, Scott Heffman. And Cerise. Sure handed on that play, gets the first down. Well, his favorite target this time, Jay held on and he beat the cornerback. And sometimes you see receiver not run his route deep enough to pick up the first down, but here he does it with plenty to spare. Eisnus is seven out of 13 for 109 yards passing. That's Warner. And he's wrapped up by 45. Rapinski, 5'8 senior. Also getting up the bottom of the pile. 77, Scott Sether. Richard Nasak. Coming off the line. Two yard game. Coming down to 10 minutes left to play. Moorhead 10, Winona 7. Moorhead with the football. Second and eight. Water 
takes the fake. Eidsness with the pass. Cerise with the catch. And that's a first down. Ball is spotted at the 22. Rised off with the coverage, but Cerise with the sliding catch gets the first and 10. Last time Jay was went to the left. This time they come back right. He's already on his back when he makes a nice grab. That was after a streak of bad luck where he had problems catching the football. He has two receptions in this series and the first down from the 23 yard line of Winona. Prokop, 32. Inside the 20 to the 18 yard line met by Eric Nastrum, number 75. Eidsness with his statistics for the year's passing stats. Over 1,200 yards, 12 touchdowns. Had another one, a touchdown pass to Cerise in this game. 13 TD passes. Second down, six. Warner, 44. Inside the 15, stats. Number 65 along the 75, Eric Nastrum. 45, Jay Rapinski. Third down, short yardage play, third and two. Eidsness breaks the huddle. 8.37 and counting in the fourth quarter. Eidsness gives to Warner. Warner is tackled by Joel Stats. And Stats is hurting as he gets off the ball carrier. That might be some of that heat they were talking about at halftime. And Joel has been all over the field on this series. Defensively for the Winhawks. A lot of quickness for 6'3", 220 pounds. The senior for the Winhawks, Joel Stats. All right, fourth down and one. See him trying to catch his breath there, and he'll need it here on fourth and one. Prokop is a wing to the right side. Fourth down and one. Warner with the carry. It looks like he has the first and ten. Really impressed, Bob, with the play the last couple of games by Chris Warner. He's a sophomore. He stepped in for their leading runner. Venice out with an injury, and to pick up the first down and all he has done was rushing for over 130 yards in the semifinal game and inching toward 100 here. Bill Stats did his best to try to prevent that first down run, but Warner had a good enough head of steam to carry forward for the first and 10 with the ball at the 12 yard line. Warner on the first down play tries to the left side and is met immediately by 77 Scott Sether. Well, this Winhawk team, they've stuck together. They had uh, some lean times. They were 2-7 and seven back in 1985, so they have come a long way. Warner, 17 carries, 86 yards. As you look at number 12, that's Rick Eidsness, senior quarterback for the Moorhead Spuds. Moorhead is leading by three and threatening with seven minutes to go in the game. On second down, and penalty marker. Maybe a motion call. Let's see. Illegal procedure. And the center moved right at the snap just before he brought the football up. Procedure on the offer. Ryan Hines comes out over the football second down and 13 from the 15 yard line shotgun formation broke up wide to the right side inside handoff to Warner and he is driven back what a hit by stats both players staying on the ground for a little bit trying to catch their breath Joel Stats all over the football field. Now you know why he's getting all the acclaim and honors he has received and all the attention by the Division I scouts. And here he comes to meet number 44, Warner, who tried to spin forward. 
He'll spend a little time in the Whirlpool, so he's back tomorrow. 6-12 and counting in the fourth quarter. Play action pass. And a flip out to the right side, and the catch is made by Nelson. Joe Nelson, and then he's thrown back with Stats leading the charge. David Boone, 81. There on the play. And Ryan Hiller will come on from the sideline with a fourth down situation and 5.50 to go. Isens was hurried here. They almost had him for the sack, but he dumps off to the man Nelson to his right, and he's finally taken down by Nayskak. A 32-yard field goal attempt for Greg Reinhiller, who nailed a 35-yarder in the third quarter. Isens to hold, and the kick is perfect. He drilled that. 5.23 to play. And Moorhead enjoys the lead now 13 to 7. We'll be back with the final 523 of this game after this. I got a taste for one with the juice. I want the orange that turns and loose. We got a surf for something cool and light. All we need is Mandarin on this side. With 10% juice. It was new. It came in a box. It's been hell ever since. I fought it. I begged it. Now it's old. Will it ever start again? Help me, someone. It's the beast in the garage. Why fight it? Get a new dependable Toro on sale at Lindale Hardware. They don't come in a box. They're set up and tuned so it'll work every time. What a company. And their guaranteed service means you'll never be left out in the cold. Put your beast to rest. Drive a stake through its heart. Your history... Greg Reinhiller, field goals of 35 and 32 yards, and number 26 will kick off. With five minutes and 23 seconds to play in this prep bowl. Number 28 for Winona is Heffman. And he gets to the 31-yard line. Good Hawks football. A six-point game period, 13 to 7, and a big possession for the Windhawks with 5.17 left. We'll see what Tom Boone and the offensive staff of Winona have cooked up here. Tom Boone, number 18. He has Heffman in the backfield. Sends him to a wing position. From the 31 on first down, Heffman coming around on the wing play. And he's out of bounds at the 34-yard line, ushered out by Cody Christensen, number 83. You heard the sticks hit the deck across the way. Yeah, play the chain gang for wanting to get out of the way. You see those players coming at you. A little Statue of Liberty fake and head off to Heffman coming around behind him. And Christensen, Cody Christensen, grabbed him and pushed him out of bounds. On second down. Heffman comes to a wing. And the handoff and a loss on the play as Olsen knifed through to get Paul Klinger. Chris Olsen, number 78 with the tackle, Perry. Great play by Chris Olson coming up next here in Channel 9. First will be prime time news following the conclusion of our double-A contest. Then the real movie Thief of Hearts, Crossman Secrets, and then Night Owl Theater, Dark at the Top of the Stairs. Night Owl Theater, all that coming up next on 9, but plenty of football left here, 4 to 21, regulation time. Here's Boone on third and 12. It's complete and on the lateral to fumble. Out of bounds. And they lost some more yardage. Winona trying some razzle-dazzle that doesn't work out. Well, we saw that play earlier today that didn't work. And here execute a little bit better. You see the lateral to the trailing back, but it Yank. was beyond them already. Yank tried to get the ball back 
to Klinger and couldn't make it. So Schneider is back to punt. Matson is deep along with Pink. That's Matson taking the football to 36 and to the 40 yard line. Met by David Boone, number 81. Let's take a break here with 357 to play in the fourth quarter. Moorhead has a 13 to 7 lead on Winona. We'll be right back. The complete line of mobile engine oils lets you choose the performance and the protection you need. Mobile lubricants are formulated to stay tough, and engines run cleaner with mobile, so you can expect longer engine life not only in your car and your truck, but in irrigation engines and tractors, construction, and industrial equipment. Mobile has it all. And you can depend on Rollins Oil Company for all your mobile products. Rollins Oil Company in Roseville, your Twin City area mobile distributor, with 36 employees to service your needs. Four cars from Chrysler show the world how America competes. Dodge Omni America, Plymouth Horizon America. At $59.95, the best value of any small car from America. And now, Dodge Aries America, Plymouth Reliant America. At $69.95, one of the best value, lowest price compacts from America, Europe, or Japan. And they all come with Chrysler 770 protection plan. Yes, America can compete. And Chrysler's building the cars that prove it. For Todd Schneider, 35-yard punt, and Chad Matson returned the ball four yards to the 40. And you see the time remaining in the game, with Moorhead leading by six. Eichnes, at quarterback number 12. He has Joe Nelson. It's a wing to the right side. Warner has a setback. And Prokop, number 32 with the carry. Rod Brown and Eric Nastrum with the tackle for Winona after a gain of seven yards, second down and three. Well, they operate out of the double wing T formation and they bring Prokop back around and Doug picks up a nice gain of six to seven yards. They operate with split backs. Prokop a wing to the right side, wide receiver to the right. And the pitch to 36 Joe Nelson. Hit by 86, Jay Yank, and tackled after a first down into Winona territory, and the ball is at the 46-yard line. Nelson did two things on that play. Not only did he pick up the first down, but he cut back to stay in bounds and keep the clock running. Both teams have their full complement of timeouts left. There you see Joe will cut back inside to avoid the sideline and the stoppage of play. Well, the clock is moving after the chains are reset. First and 10. Forehead from the 46 of Winona. I just gives to 36 Nelson. He gets about three or four. And Nastrum, number 75, there to wrap him up. Joe Nelson getting up slowly. We have a timeout on the field with 2.31 to go. Moorhead 13, Winona 7. And we'll take a break here. With guitar, Schmitz goes to extremes. Martin, since 1833, builds the world's finest acoustics, handmade of the best solid hardwoods with lifetime warranties. Now the Stinger Electric in hot body shapes and colors is backed by the Martin name at just 179. For the power and dependability the pros count on, it's America's own Crate Amps. With 60 watts, 12-inch Celestian speaker, and the best warranty in the industry, Crate's G60 GT whales at just 299. Here and try the extremes at Schmitz. Perry Winona took its first time out to stop the clock at 2.31, and now it's second down for Moorhead as the Spuds. They want to keep the ball moving and eat up some more time, leading by six. Well, you know, as soon as they get the ball, they'll be clutching it dearly to them, and the Winona defense will try to rip it away and create a turnover. Here's Warner, 44, to the 40-yard line. Third down and a little more than three. Joel Stats, Eric Nastrum, Scott Sether. 
ganging up on number 44 Chris Warner. 2-14 and counting in the game. Coming in for the Spuds, number 61, Michael Hegman, with 65, Stephen Collins checking out on the line. Now wide to the left, Jay Cerise, number two. A minute 53 to go. Warner again with the carry, and he does not have first down yardage. Not a yard short. He gets thrown back. Asak in on the play again. Along with Scott Sether. Fourth down. And the officials are going to measure. A measurement with a minute 47 to go. How close they are to the first down, Barry. Almost the entire Winona team is over there watching. They didn't make it. It's a short fourth down. Cerise stays in the game and so does quarterback Rick Heidsness. Other champions crowned today. Silver Lake and nine man. Miniota repeated in Class C. Granite Falls in Class B. Cambridge repeated the Class A title. And now it's Moorhead and Winona battling with a minute 47 left in the game for the Class 2A championship. Fourth and inches. Heights this with the keep first down. The officials motion for the change to move along the sideline to reset. After the first down run on the quarterback keep by Rick Eidstis. A minute 32 to go. Winona with two timeouts left. Moorhead has all three of its timeouts. The wing T motion. Breaks it inside the 30 to the 26. Jay Thill, number 74, gets up from Rod Brown, number 38 on the stop. And now Winona takes a timeout with a minute five to play. And a gain of seven, second down and three, coming up for Moorhead as the Spuds lead by six and time running down on Winona. Well, the Spuds certainly can taste it now with 105 remaining on that fourth down play. What Eidsness did was let everyone surge, and then he kind of delayed on his own sneak and went over the search for the first down. And now the Winhawks with only one timeout, but what a game. Number 65 has played. Joel Stats, he has been all over the football field, not only on defense, but we saw that crunching block he made on the touchdown run by the Winhawks. What a great season that club has had. Chris Warner is over the 100 yard mark. He has carried the ball 21 times for 103 now. So. Over 100 yards for number 44, Chris Warner of the Moorhead Spuds. So to the depth they had at that tailback position with Bennis out, their leading ground gainer. Then steps the sophomore in a pressure situation and responds with two successive 100-yard-plus rushing days. Jay Cerise comes out wide to the right side. John Hagnes is tied into the left. And the handoff to 44, Warner. On the second down play, he takes the ball to the 25, and now the final timeout has been used by the Winhawks. With 58 seconds to go, the timeout is taken. Over on the Winona sideline, they know that time is running out with only 58 seconds left. A 7-7 score at halftime and two field goals for Moorhead with Greg Ryan Killer hitting from 32 yards out and 35 yards out. Moorhead leads by 13 to 7. Now the Moorhead defense done the job, but certainly Winona has performed so well tonight too. The holding a very powerful Moorhead offense to just but uh, or but two field goals here in the second half and a total of 13 points thus far. Moorhead's 
football. 58 seconds left. And a third and one play after the timeout. Over the football. Ryan Hines. Hides this down under. And close to a first down. Number 44, Chris Warner. With a tackle made by Yank. Nasak. Nastrum in on the play for Winona. And the officials are calling for another measurement with 53 seconds to go. If the Spuds didn't get the first down, they have another down to work with. And just short. <laughs> Can't get much closer than that. Fourth down, not even an inch. And timeout has been taken by the Moorhead Spuds. They used the first of their three timeouts. And 53 seconds to go. Coming up Monday from Fox Television on Channel 9, the TV Academy Hall of Fame starting at 7 o'clock. And then at 10.35, the season premiere of the Wilton North Report. That's at 10.35. All coming your way Monday. Well, we talk about big plays by big players and big games. And Joel Stats, number 65, the linebacker for Winona, has had such a night. He has set a Pro Bowl record for tackles with 21. So he has certainly lived up to billing here tonight as have his teammates performed well. With 53 seconds to go, all of the timeouts used. The Leona defense digs in. Fourth down, about an inch to go for the first down. Rick Eisner's number 12 is ready. And movement on the line on the left side. Michael Eggman, number 61. A little bit anxious there on fourth and probably a quarter of an inch. Now becomes five yards and a quarter of an inch. I'm black. Fourth down. 53 seconds left. Fourth down six. Eisenhuis with the pitch. And this is Joe Nelson. And Nelson out of bounds. Clock stop 48 seconds to go. And Winona will take over. Yank and Reisdorf over there on the play. The sideline chasing the ball carrier, Joe Nelson. So one last chance here for the Winona Winhawks who are down by six points. Touchdown with Ty. The extra point could win if Winona can put it together in the final 48 seconds. Well, nice defensive stand there by the Winhawks. They were aided by the penalty. It certainly helped. Made the difference on fourth down, and they have 48 seconds with which to work. Tom Boone, the quarterback, number 18. Throwing long complete. Send it for number 86, Jay Yank. Second down, 42 seconds to play. Second and 10 from the 28-yard line of the Winhawks. 42 seconds left in the 1987 high school football season in Minnesota. Our fifth game for you from Prep Bowl 6 at the Metrodome. Wide receivers both ways. Going on second down. Throws complete on the near sideline. Caught by Scott Ernest. Chad Sundum with the tackle, number 11. By getting out of bounds, the clock stops at 37 seconds to go. Third down, three. 
13 to 7. Moorhead with the lead. Winona with the football. 81, David Boone. Goes to the right side. Here's the third down play. And Tom Boone is sacked. Coming through at number 50, Scott Gothier. Now they got to get people back. 22 seconds left in the game. And it's now fourth down. 88, Westby into the game with the play. 12 seconds to go. And Tom Boone on the sprint out. Complete and out of bounds with five seconds to go. Jay Yank with the catch, Dan Pink. And Jeffrey Bergman over defensively for Moorhead. Well, they picked up the first, da first down and got out of bounds. And so now this will create the Hail Mary situation. Good pressure. But uh, Boone handles it nicely to dump it off. Just and five seconds to go. Time for the Hail Mary. Yank goes wide to the far side. David Boone comes split to the near side, a slot to the right. One running back. Tom Boone with the drop. He throws long down the sideline, out of bounds. That's it. The game's over. Out comes the ice. The ice water all over head coach Dan Costas. And his Moorhead Spuds have taken the Minnesota State 2A championship by the final score. Moorhead 13, Winona 7. We're going to keep it right here. The award ceremony is coming up. And won't you have a look at the celebration going on for the Moorhead Spuds. The award ceremony is coming up in just a moment. The final, Moorhead 13, Winona 7. The 45 yard touchdown pass, Heidsness to Cerise in the first quarter. Ryan Hiller with the point after made it 7 0. Then a block punt by Scott Sether set up an 11 yard touchdown run by Paul Klinger in the first quarter. The kick was good, 7 7, Moorhead and Winona. And then a pair of field goals. In the fourth quarter by Ryan Hiller, one from 35, the other from 32, gave the lead to Moorhead for good in the final 13 to 7. Now let's go to the public address. Of Dick Miles of Richfield, Pete Belvin of South St. Paul, assisted by State High School League executive staff, will make the awards presentation. Will the captains of the Winona team come forward to receive the silver medals and the runner-up trophy? Winona High School, Class AA runner-up in football for 1987. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we direct your attention to the area in front of the Moorhead section, where Polly Rykowski of Apple Valley and Dick O'Connell of Marshall, assisted by State High School League executive staff, will make the presentation where the captains of the Moorhead team come forward to receive the gold medals and the championship trophy.
So the Moorhead Spuds are champions in Class AA in Minnesota, 13 to 7 over Winona. And we'll be back to wrap up our prep bowl coverage on a long day. Give you all the results of the other games, so stay tuned. I've traveled around the world for diving competition, and everywhere versatility and quality counts. That's why my Thinsulate zip line trench coat is from Foreman and Clark. It's water repellent and just right for any weather. And this full-length wool coat will get me through any winter. Best of all, Foreman and Clark has some price that you can afford both for less than you might pay elsewhere for just one. Compare. At Foreman and Clark, you'll find versatility and quality in men's clothing at prices you can afford. I'm so proud. Proud of my wife. Thanks. And I'll be proud of Bobby. Sarah. He'll play baseball. Tennis. Just like his dad. Mom. He'll be a legend in football. A champ on the court. I think he'll go camping, fishing, golfing, swimming. I think we'll go broke. Nah. We'll go to best. Oh. When you're thinking about sporting goods, think best. I can't wait. Well, good, because I think it's time. Time for what? to America. It's not just men who farm our land, but also more than a million farm women who work as their partners to make America's food system one of the most productive on earth. That's something we shouldn't take for granted. This message brought to you on behalf of the American farmer by the makers of dual herbicide. close. Back at the Metrodome, the Procter & Gamble Shure congratulates the offensive and defensive players of the game. And in this case, is the quarterback number 12, Rick Eidsness of Moorhead, the offensive player of the game, and saluting defensively the excellent linebacker Joel State, uh, Stats of uh, Winona, who had a record-setting night here this evening as our defensive player of the game. Procter & Gamble donating $100 per player to the Minnesota State High School League in the player's name to aid the chemical dependency program in our state's high schools. Congratulations to both Rick and Joel. Let's go down to the field and Dick Bremer. Rick Eisenus, it took nine times for Moorhead to come down here and finally win the state title, but you did it. It has to be a great feeling. Oh, it's the best feeling in the world. This is what we've worked for all year. What about the, the special satisfaction you must get after the very difficult five overtime loss in the basketball tournament last year that must make it even more special? Yeah, we've been, I've been down here before and known the, the other end of the story, and I'm sure glad I'm on this side now. I know your dad was not able to be here because he had, he's the Concordia basketball coach. He had a basketball game tonight, but I'm sure he's probably watching on TV. Yeah, he's probably watching me now. Hi, Dad. All right, congratulations, Rick Moorhead, the state champions in Class AA for 1987. All right, thank you very much, Dick. And the other scores from today's play in Class A, it was Cambridge 28, Lakeville 14. In Class B, Granite Falls beat Ely 43 to 20. Then in Class C, Minnesota repeated uh, its championship of a year ago, taking care of Grand Meadow 27 to 7. Chris Might with a big day passing. And then Silver Lake won 30 to 14 over Verndale in the nine-man championship. And again, I'd like to say thanks to our entire crew. Uh, they made it an enjoyable day. We had some good football here today. The bands were superb. And I should say that uh, the Prep Bowl 6 was a smashing success uh, when you take into consideration all of the weather and a uh, good crowd today, really. No question about it. More than 34,700 showed up here. And we mentioned the traveling conditions this morning were abysmal even for us to get here but you can imagine several busloads had to turn back so all in all a, a full and certainly good and exciting day of football here in prep bowl six we were hoping for a close game and we got one with two field goals winning it for moorhead over winona in the final game of the day ryan hiller might get overlooked a little bit but he came through with two uh 
30 plus yard field goals and that was the difference in the second half all the scoring and for it was nice it's nice to go on a close exciting championship game like that in double a and for tom me and company and the truck and the entire crew for perry williams jim gilliland dick bremer this is john rooney we sure hope you've enjoyed our day-long coverage of prep ball six with silver lake Minnesota, granite falls cambridge and moorhead state champions for 1987 in the state of minnesota this is john rooney saying so long from the metrodome I'm at a house after I get settled and look around his office a little bit, okay? Thanks, Dad.